basically we're going to be talking about the UI and uh, everything that Ed had uh, covered. And then when you click on start learning here, that's when we're going to ask you to log in. As you can see, uh, I'm logged in already, but if you click on start learning, it's going to give you a few options. You can log in with Cisco uh, ID or you can log in with GitHub um, and, or WebEx. There are a few options. And at any time, if you run into issues, uh, please raise your hand or you can put it in the chat or Q&A and we're going to be monitoring those. Uh, and uh, we can get into a uh, breakout session with you to help you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but the lab, this is how the lab is built. On the left side is the instructions. Uh, it's kind of like a lab guide. And on the right side, you will see an editor on the top where you can edit files. And also you have access to files in the system uh, where you can navigate and find the files that you need to modify. And at the bottom is a terminal. Uh, this gets you straight into the container that Ed was talking about. This is the container that you're going to be interacting with in the lab today. And the lab is, uh, uh, like I said, you have access to, to uh, for, uh, for two hours, but uh, it shouldn't take you more than 45 minutes. And uh, one thing that Ed mentioned is that we'll also spin up a, a, a SaaS instance of uh, Panoptica for you. And you can sign up for it uh, yourself. It, I would strongly suggest you do a right click here on the, um, so it, hopefully you're looking, this is very important. Uh, so there's a uh, right click on this link and say open link in incognito window. And why we want you to do that is because um, we want to avoid any potential uh, logging issue. Uh, you, you might have access to it. Uh, through other means, or you might have access to some other products that might uh, make it uh, not working for you. So you will be brought into the Panoptica page in an incognito mode. Um, so this is very important. And if you don't have an account, click on this button, right? So it will say get Panoptica for free. Uh, so click on that and you can sign in with your Cisco ID or uh, there are a few options there as well. Um, so once you uh, sign up, you actually would have a lifetime free account uh, for you can run up, uh, up to one cluster and with uh, 15 nodes. Right? So that is enough to, to host a pretty decent size application already and you can have it for free uh, for life. So uh, once you sign up uh, and it's going to ask you to log in and once you log in, it's going to take you to the Panoptica dashboard. And this is what we're going to be working on today. Uh, so this is your UI to the lab. Um, so then we can follow the instructions here. The first step is, uh, of course, now we gain access to the dashboard. Um, we So I just want to call out, if you've done this lab before, you might see that there is already one cluster that's deployed, uh, which is the DevNet Express one. So let's uh, it's safe to remove it because uh, otherwise you would already have an instance that's running. Um, so what you do is you delete the cluster and detach and delete all. It's gone, and then uh, you are good for, uh, for this lab. Um, and then after that, uh, the first thing that we ask you to do is we need to create a new user. Uh, it is under System and Manage Users. And when you are creating the user, one thing to call out is make sure that you choose the right user type, the, the user role. It has to be a service user because we're going to be interacting with it through uh, API. And you give it a name and make sure it's active. And then the, if click finish and the user is created. Um, so all we need uh, from that user is the token. So uh, when you are at the API user, click on the token button and it's going to show you access key and security a uh, secret key. And these are the two keys that we need uh, from the system. So basically just follow the, follow the, the guide here. Um, keep that window open. And then uh, all, so throughout the lab, you will see all of these play buttons. Um, so that, this means you don't have to copy and paste the content into the terminal. Just uh, click on the play button it's going to do it automatically for you. As you can see, all the commands are executed 
so it should be fairly easy to follow, right? And uh, another thing is uh, we're checking on the Kubernetes nodes. Uh, it takes about five minutes for everything to be fully spinned up. So if you see it's not saying ready or anything, uh, wait for about, uh, yeah, uh, three, uh, two or three minutes. It should uh, get ready. Um, and you can click this button multiple times uh, to, to follow the status. And you can continue to the rest of the lab until everything is, uh, you know, if everything is ready. And we're going to do a few other checks. We're going to check the uh, context. We're going to check uh, the Terraform version. Uh, although this lab, all the automation is, based, is built on top of Terraform, but uh, you don't have to use Terraform. Uh, there are multiple other ways for you to, to, to leverage. You can use the API directly, or you can use other tools, or you can just do it manually. It shouldn't take too much effort. We just want to streamline the whole uh, uh, process for you and make sure we can, uh, the whole lab can finish within 45 minutes. So we're using Terraform. Um, and you can use the code, like all the code is posted on the GitHub. Um, so you can use the code if you want to uh, do this lab in your own environment as well. And one thing to call out uh, another thing that's very, very important. And by the way, you can start the lab now. You don't have to wait for me to finish. You can start doing it um, and let us know if you have any question. Uh, but I'll just call out a few important things. Another important thing is make sure that you click on this refresh button. Uh, because the code was downloaded to the environment, if you don't click re refresh, it's not going to show up. Okay, make sure you click this refresh button and you should see the DNA app stack, and then you will see all the files. And these are the files that we actually cloned from the uh, GitHub. Another important thing is make sure you edit all the environment variables. Uh, so I put them in one file so it's easy for you to, to, to access and modify. Um, so here, the access key is the access key that we got from um, the uh, token page here. So just copy from here and replace the access key. And same thing for the secret. Um, so copy it from here and then paste it here. And one thing I want to, another thing I want to mention is that we're giving uh, a swag to the first five people that finished the lab and as also the survey. So we're gonna uh, be sending you this uh, very nice bag with uh, 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 a Yeti mug and you know a, a few uh, swags. Um, so the first five people who finish the whole lab and fill the survey. So make sure when you finish the lab, uh, it's gonna spit out a link uh, for a survey link. Make sure you don't close it because if you close it, it's uh, pretty hard to get back to it. So click on that link and then you can fill the survey, okay? Uh, so if you finish early, uh, don't rush, don't, don't close that window, don't close this window yet. Uh, make sure you can find the link. And another thing is uh, for you to properly get the swag, uh, please put your uh, email address here. Uh, so it'd be awesome if it's your company email address, otherwise we'll, we might have issue finding you to, to give you the swag. Uh, so make sure you put your email address here. We're not gonna share this uh, information to anybody else. It's just contained in this lab. Um, okay, so after filling all the information, uh, the, please double check you filled the access key, secret key, and your email addresses. Uh, keep the keep the bracket uh, the the quotes right, so they're uh, pretty important as well. Um, and then we can go ahead and click on um, the uh, the next button, which is we're going to be importing these um, variables, and then the last step. Um, is to we verify the environment. It's going to tell you the verification was successful. Uh, if you're missing any of the information, it's going to let you know what you're missing. Um, if everything's all right, we can go to the next step. Um, so this is another tricky part. I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, so the first file that we're going to be editing is under the DNA AppSec and under Panoptica. Uh, there's a main.tf file. So this is the main configuration for Terraform. Um, so we're going to be pasting this module here. Um, so you, you don't have to scroll to the bottom and click on it. You don't have to do that. You can start uh, from anywhere. And uh, this, uh, this system is smart enough to figure out where is the end of the file. And it's going to uh, paste automatically 
the content to the end of the file. But this is the only part that we need to modify for the, uh, the main.tf. But please note, uh, there is another main.tf file, which is under modules, and then panoptica, and then there's another main.tf file. And this file is way shorter, and we need to paste these two paragraphs here. And this is to configure the module for Panoptica and also our uh, web application. Uh, once that's done, we're going to initialize uh, uh, Terraform. And then, so everything's initialized. And then we're going to um, uh, output the, 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 the plan. Uh, so we're, we're going to have two things to add. So if you see it uh, shows differently, that means you probably might have uh, misconfigured uh, the, the module. It, I, I saw some people just pasted everything into the main uh, uh, file, the main.tf file, not the one under the modules and the panoptica. Sometimes you, you get errors. Uh, but if everything is fine, we can continue to finish, uh, to apply uh, the Terraform uh, plan. And uh, this is going to take uh, roughly about a, a minute and 20 seconds. Uh, so just uh, wait patiently for that to finish. Um, so this is, uh, so what's doing in the backend is Terraform is taking these configuration and it's configuring, it's talking to the API um, uh, through to Panoptica and it's deploying uh, Panoptica into our environment. Um, and that's all done uh, automatically for you. Um, and while we're doing this, uh, is there any question or anybody run into any issue? Okay, looks like everybody's doing all right. Cool. And another thing I want to uh, quickly mention is that um, the, the dashboard is open, right? And uh, at any time, if you see uh, there's any uh, sort of delay, let us know, and we're going to help you uh, uh, troubleshoot and see if there's any problem. Um, so the deployment that we're doing, like I showed you a bit earlier, is that we're deploying uh, um, into the uh, cluster name. Uh, today is going to be called the DevNet Express cluster. And um, uh, make sure after the deployment, it sh should show up here. And if it doesn't, then we might have an issue uh, with the deployment. Uh, like I said, it takes about one minute and 20 seconds and everything is deployed. Uh, so we can verify the status. Uh, we can show the namespace um, and uh, we see the, the new module called uh, port shift. Uh, so the new namespace was created, uh, port shift. This is uh, our Panoptica. And also you can see uh, all the things that we spun up inside that namespace. Uh, the agents that we're deploying. And this is, was all done through the API automatically. And uh, Panoptica also deploys Istio for you. So it, you can see it's running. And if everything's running okay, then we can get into the next step, which is we're deploying our um, application. So as uh, Ed mentioned, this application is called Yelp. It's, it's a fairly simple application, uh, just the front end, and a app server, and we have a database and Redis. So that's it, right? So only about four components. Uh, and we can easily deploy it by getting into the Yelp folder. Click on this button. We're going to get into that folder. And then uh, you can look at the, the YAML file that's going to show you uh, how this application was built. Uh, after that's done, we can click this one button that runs, that, uh, that deploys Yelp into our system. Uh, so now it's fully deployed and we can see whether it was created. It was created eight seconds ago and, and all the services are created and all the pods are created. Uh, they will be showing in a, initializing for about um, a minute or so. So you can uh, click on this button a few, uh, a few times to monitor the status. Uh, yeah, it should take like about uh, one to two minutes uh, for it to fully spin up. So while it's spinning up, uh, let me see if there's any question. Okay, there are no questions. And again, if you run into any issue, 
uh, please uh, raise your hand or type it in the chats or Q&A. Uh, Ed and I are going to help you individually. We can get into a breakout room and we can help you with your individual problem. Um, so let's see if it's, yeah. So now you can see it's fully running. Uh, we have our application that is running now. Um, so the next thing we can do is we can click on this uh, briefcase button. So uh, please pay attention, everybody. There's a briefcase button. Once you deploy the application, click on the briefcase button and click on the first link here that it says Yelp URL. Uh, click on this link and that is going to bring up the Yelp interface. So this is the web application that we just deployed. Uh, although there's no data, and we're going to pop some data into it. Um, so it's a very simple application, as you can see. Uh, so make sure you access it through this link here. And once again, you need to click on this briefcase button. And then it's the first link that you click. OK. Um, and then we our application is fully up and running. The next thing that we do is we're going to simulate some traffic. So we are going to use uh, a tool called Locust, like uh, Ed mentioned. So click on this button, it's going to simulate uh, some clicks for us. And if you are, um, please keep the Yelp interface open, right? And you can refresh and you can see a lot of clicks that was simulated by Locust, okay? So now, so by doing this, we're sim really simulating some traffic. And now if you go back to the Panoptica interface, you can see we had a ton of events. Uh, we did some deployment. And then you should be able to see some connections that are happening as well. So this was reported in real time uh, by Panoptica. Our deployment into this environment is reporting in real time all the um, connections that are happening. And another thing that you can see is uh, in the navigators, you will see uh, we're analyzing this whole application and you can see all the components of the application and how they're communicating e uh, with each other and all the different risks that we are were able to identify um, so this is all happening in real time and this is your live environment uh, we also have a operations view that breaks out uh, and show you details like what are the ports that they're communicating with each other uh, so yeah some additional details and you can play with this environment uh, for a little bit. And uh, to stop simulation of the traffic, we can uh, click Control C, uh, click on the terminal first, uh, click Control C, and that's going to stop the locus script. Um, and then we can continue to the next part of the lab. Okay, and we had already simulated a lot of clicks. So the next step really is to look at all of our policies. And you can play with the policies yourself. So there are a few ways, uh, like Ed was mentioning, we're uh, trying to help you to do micro segmentation of these applications. And you can look at uh, policies uh, that, that uh, if you already have some policies there, uh, of course, um, that could be from your previous deployments. Uh, but one thing is if this is a brand new deployment, the system is smart enough to give you some advice. Um, so we have a policy advisor, that you can run and that it's going to analyze your environment and it's going to give you some suggestions uh, but you can also automate this as well so we have uh, a few steps over here that walk you through uh, how do you automate uh, the deployment of uh, of some connection rules and uh, we've already defined some connection rules here for you um, so um, so you basically you need to copy uh, the, the rules uh, from here into the connection rules.tf file and then um, run the rule. And then through Terraform, we're going to deploy those connection rules uh, to your uh, Panoptica. And then you will see the rules show up here. And you can also create these rules manually or you can use the policy advisor. Um, so they basically uh, pretty much do the same. Um, and after that's done, and this is uh, the end of the lab actually, uh, like I said, uh, after the lab is finished, there's the one last button that you have to click. And this is going to give you a link to the survey. And once again, this is important. Uh, once you are done all the content, click on this button. 
that says um, a survey, right? So it's going to spit out a link to the survey. And click on that link. It's going to bring you to this event survey. And please fill out the survey and click submit. And that's uh, going to let us know that you, you first you finish and that second you fill the survey. And we're going to uh, find the five first five people who, who, who finish all the survey first. And then we're going to send you some swags. Okay, so this is a quick rundown of the lab. And now please uh, keep running the lab. And if you have run into any issue, uh, let us know. Ed and I are going to jump into individual sessions to help you. Um, yeah, so, so uh, good luck with the lab. I was late to the session. Uh, is there a way, are the, the, the content you have here, is that available online or anywhere? Yeah, so um, the ad is going to share the slide deck and um, the, the lab itself is available online. Um, so um, you can access, uh -huh. the, yeah. So did you get the link to the lab though? I, uh, what do you come through the WebEx or email? Yeah, so it's it was in the chat, but if you join late, uh, you might not see it. So the link to to uh, attend the lab is a cs co slash panoptica. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll the there is that's the con that's the content there. So yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll go later. I don't want to slow you down, but I'll, I'll do it later. Okay. So I'm assuming, this is, I'm assuming this is available whenever, at any time. Or... Correct. Yeah. Okay, thank but you. But once you start, you have about two hours to finish the lab. Otherwise, it's going to reset automatically. Okay. Uh, but you can do it again if you want to, right? So, um, okay. yeah. Thank you. But, yeah, but to get the swags, uh, that's only available through this session. So. <laughs> Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's... Okay. I'm just more interested in, in the topic. In the content, yeah. yeah. Cool, no problem. <laughs> Another quick uh, trick is you can jump uh, through different sections. Once you click this uh, burger button, yeah, you can jump uh, between introduction, setting up, environment, provisioning, uh, deploy application, and create uh, policies. You can jump. Um, through the through the content if you want to, uh, but uh, I strongly suggest follow the steps one by one. Otherwise, you might run into um, some issues. Right. And again, after the lab, the code is available to you, um, so you can you can get the code from right here. Um, so it's on GitHub, and um, we have all the you know the Terraform. Um, so this is the content of it, right? So we got uh, the Terraform configuration, uh, as well as uh, some basic scripts uh, that we're leveraging, uh, some configuration of the kind environment. And, you know, so you can use this to set up your own lab as well. Or if you already have a Kubernetes environment, you, you can use this to, to easily deploy Panoptica into your, uh, your own environment. Um, so Barry, here's a question: Is everybody yes. on the call? Are they Cisco? Or are they all over the place? Oh, uh, customers, partners. Yeah, we got. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, a really good mix. I'm having, by the way, I'm having issues inside Cisco uh, deploying Kubernetes and getting the images down because of the proxy. So if you guys in DevNet have figured that out, I'd love to hear about it. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, Proxies I'll cause me pain. And, so. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll send you a note, Barry, if, sure. you, if you know us to make it do that. Okay. That, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And there was a question about recording. Yes, uh, we're going to be sharing the recording uh, as well of this session. And I think, Orly, maybe we could pause the recording now. Um, I don't have more content. So uh, now we're just uh, be helping people troubleshoot if they run into any issue. <laughs>